Okay, so in this one, we're going to look at how we can conduct some simple tests on electronic components that are commonly found in circuit boards. Let's start with the diode. Now notice, there's one sign that has a first. Let's get our meter into the appropriate setting, which is the diode mode setting. This is represented by a cross just on top of an arrow. Notice here the arrow with the cross. However, it's in yellow or sort of orange color, which means we need to use our function button on our meter to get into the diode setting. And also notice on the screen, it changes from the speaker icon to the cross icon as I press the button. Let's do that. Notice we're now in diode mode as represented by the arrow and the cross. So let's go ahead and test our diode. Again, the striped side with the gray stripe is the negative side of the diode. So let's place our black or negative lead on that side and our positive or red probe on the opposite side. And we're looking for a reading of between 0.4 to 0.7. And we see on the meter, let's see if I can get a more steady reading, 0.55. Okay, now let's switch the probes around. This time the red probe on the negative side of the diode and the black probe on the positive side and we should get no reading or an OL on the meter. And that's exactly what we get. So this diode is probably good. Let's test this fella. Now this fella is actually also a diode. He's then a diode. Notice one side of the cylinder has a black color and this is the negative side of that diode. Now, because we are testing another diode, there's no need to change the function on the meter. But we place our black probe, or black lead, on the negative side of the diode. Let's get you back over here. And the red probe on the opposite side. We should once again get a reading on the meter of between 0.4 to 0.7. And we see we get 0.62. Let's switch those probes around. This time the red on the negative side and the plaque on the positive side we should get no reading on open blind as we do so this diode is also probably good for our next test we will be looking at a two pin switch now switches turn things on they turn things off by default for simplicity in this video this switch is off so it's not turning anything on which means there is no continuity in the line when there's continuity so that electricity can flow through a circuit it does things like turn a light on or activate a motor and until the button is pressed the switch is open so we use the continuity mode to test switches and we would remember what we did was we used our function button to go into diode mode. Now continuity mode is actually on the same dial, but it's represented by the speaker. So let's once again press the yellow button to deactivate diode mode. Look at the screen as it changes from diode to speaker or continuity mode. And we can verify this by touching the probes together and we should get that audible beep song. So we are now in continuity mode. So testing this switch by placing each probe onto the legs of the switch we should get an open line or no reading as we do however when we press the button the circuit should be completed and we should get a beep now because of the size <laughs> apologies because of the size of the button when i press it your know, vision would be impeded but bear with me All you need to know is that I'm taking each probe and I'm placing it onto the legs of the switch and then I'm pressing the button to complete the circuit. And that should give us our continuity and our beep sound. Button on, button off. Switch on, switch off. So this is probably a good switch. Now this switch works the same way except it has four pins and you could technically think about this like two two pin switches but with one button or one controller so the way this works is 
the two panels that are on the same side are by default one switch so they are open and when we press the button we get continuity so that the circuit is completed it's the same for the other two on the opposite side so let's first pass these two sorry about that i touched the probes together i'm touching now the two legs that are facing me and there's an open line no continuity because the button is impressed talk to you later hold on okay okay sorry about that so now i'm going to turn the switch around so I can test the other two legs. And again, they're also open because I haven't pressed the button. Now this time, when I touch both legs and I press the button, we shouldn't get that audible beep sound like we did before. Using the two pin switch. It's a bit fiddly, bear with me. Switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. And I can do the same with the other two legs. That one the opposite side. Spin it around so it's easier for me to access. Switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. So this four pin switch is also probably good. Our next test is for an LED bulb or LED lights. Notice LED as a night emitting light emitting diode. The name diode tells us we should probably also use the diode function on our meter. So let's switch back to diode. Notice we want continuity represented by the speaker. One press again on the yellow. It's on the same dial. So now we're back into diode mode. One of these pins is sometimes longer that can be the positive side of the bulb so let's take our positive probe and place it on the longer leg and our negative probe place it on the other one and we should get a little light if you look closely yeah there we go and the meter also jumps up to 1.9 volts however if we switch the leads around we should get an open line and the bulb should remain off as it does. So this LED is probably good. One next test is for a electrolytic capacitor. Now, capacitors are usually measured in farads. This one's rated for 470 microfarads. Notice one side of the capacitor has a gray stripe. That represents the negative side of the capacitor. Okay. So before we actually test the capacitor, we need to place the meter into the appropriate reading, in the appropriate setting, which is 4 farads. And this is represented by the two T's sort of facing each other. Notice again, these T's are in a sort of orange-yellow color. So to get into that function, we should once again press our function button and observe the horseshoe, which is for resistance, should change into farads, F for farads. So we can now test our capacitor. I remember the striped side was the negative side, so let's place our black lead there. And our positive probe on the opposite side and one thing you should know before i do this test i already know what the result is going to be even though the capacitor is rated for 470 microfarads capacitors rarely read what they're rated for there's a certain amount of tolerance so i'm not going to get into how much tolerance you should allow for but let's see what reading we get Let's see, we've got 400 and 
Let's get this study reading. Come on. 414 microfarads. Which, for me, it's good enough. This little fella is also a capacitor. And, um, my camera is unlikely to pick the reading up, but you can trust me, it's actually rated for 22 nanofarads. And let's do the test on this one. We're already into our capacitor testing mode. Place the probes on each side of the capacitor. And as you can see on the meter, we've got 22 nanofarads. Let's give a study reading, come on. There we go, 22 nanofarads. So this capacitor is also probably good. Now, before I get on to the transistor, let's look at some of the SMD components. This little fella is also a diode. We did some diodes earlier. Remember these guys? Diodes, diodes. This little guy is a surface mounted diode. But the principle for testing is pretty much the same. What we do is we find the negative sign, which is usually represented by a little line Maybe you can't see that, but I can. And that line will start the negative side of the diode. So we need to put our meter back into diode mode. Remember the arrow with the cross. And then the function key. Yeah, we're currently in continuity mode. Now diode mode. The line is the end, so this is the negative side of the diode. Place the positive probe on the opposite side, and once again, we're looking for a reading of between 0.4 to 0.7. We get 0.5, that's good. We switch it around, we should get no reading on OL in the meter, and that's exactly what we get, so the style is also probably good. The next component, tonight's really small, it's an SMD capacitor, little capacitor. No one like his larger friends, usually in electronics, when we test for bad capacitors, we would run a continuity test. So let's please our meter back into continuity mode. It's currently in diode mode. Speaker, continuity. And the way this works is if there's continuity when testing both sides of the capacitor and swapping the probes around, it usually means there's something wrong with the capacitor or something wrong with the circ or something wrong in the circuit that the capacitor is attached to. So let's test one way. Notice it was just one snipe beat, but it doesn't stay on, so there's no continuity there. Let's swap the probes around. One little beat, but it doesn't stay on, so no continuity. So it's not a comprehensive test. The other tests we can do using more specialized tools and more and, and other readings. However, for simplicity, let's leave it as that. What would happen inside the actual circuit is that we would place the negative probe on the ground of the circuit, and then we'll take the positive probe and test both sides of the capacitor. It's usual, it's common for one side to test for continuity with ground, However, if both sides if both sides test for continuity with ground, it usually means there may be an issue with the capacitor or somewhere along that circuit that the capacitor is attached to. So what we have here next is actually a component that's meant to test as having continuity with what we have here next is a component that is actually meant to test with continuity. What we have here is a component that actually is meant to have continuity when we test both ways, and this is a SMD fuse. So, let's test the fuse. There's continuity, and swapping the probes around should make no difference, because the fuse is essentially a conductive piece of wire. 
and a fuse tests well. Now this component is the transistor. I deliberately left it for last because it sometimes trips people up the explanation of how these work. Now, for the sake of simplicity, let's just see there are two types of transistors. You've got the NPN or PNP transistors. And what this means is, because you've got these three legs, when we swap the probes around doing these different types of tests that I'm going to show you now, if we get a reading, if we get a reading on two separate legs while the positive probe is connected to them, it's a P and P transistor. So we've got two P's, P and P. If the reverse is true, meaning if we get a reading on two legs when moving around the black probe, that means there are two ends, so it's an NPN transistor. Let's see how this works in practice, so hopefully you can understand it a bit better, if you don't already. So, the first thing we need to do is place our meter into the correct settings. We're going to use the diode mode, because essentially inside of transistors, and generally two diodes, so the diode mode is quite appropriate for testing transistors. Remember, because we're now in continuity, even though it's on the same dial, we need to get to the arrow icon, so let's press our function button on the meter, and we're now in diode mode. We can start running our tests from any pin, however, so we can have a sort of systematic approach. Let's first start with the pin to the extreme left by placing the red probe on it and then placing the black probe on the center pin. We see we get a reading of 0.7. Remember what I said before about diodes, a reading of between 0.4 to 0.7? So that counts as one reading. So we know we've already got a P and an N. Let's switch the positive probe now to the extreme right pin and see if we get a reading. We also get a reading. So we've got two positive pins, which means this is a P and P transistor. Notice there was only one negative pole, which was the one in the center, which means P, one reading, the two pin with the red probe, another reading, P and P. If we were to try something different, like please send the black probe on the first leg and the red probe on the center leg, notice there is no reading. Or we try something different, like the red probe in the center and the black probe on the third leg, also no reading. And this is how we tell the type of transistor in addition to when or not the transistor is good or bad. So I actually almost forgot about the good old resistor. Let's see how we would test a resistor. We place our meter onto the horseshoe symbol as an ohms to read resistance. Next, we place one probe on each side of the resistor. In this case, it doesn't matter which way our probes are placed. And we see on the multimeter, we get a reading of 1.2 ohms. I know this is correct for this particular resistor, based on the color banding that it has. You can use a simple online tool to compare the bands with what the reading of the resistor should be. That is its own value. Hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you again in the next. Bye for now.